Hey everybody, Jess here with Key Tarot. I'm gonna do a reading for the uh, new moon for Twin Flames. So, I hope it goes well. We have had a lot of divine counterpart energy on all of the dailies that I have done, or not dailies, but they haven't been daily, let's be real. Um, but all of the readings I've done in the recent past and posted, um, we've seen a lot of divine masculine, divine feminine energy. Um, I have this strange feeling that something's coming up for um, Twin Flame Divine Counterparts sometime in the Sagittarius season. I don't know why I feel that way. I've just felt that way for a couple of months now. Um, but aside from what I think about anything, let's just say a quick blessing and see what the cards have to say. All right. It might be your story today. It might not be. Let's just find out. All right. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for being with us all here and in every breath that we take. We ask that you direct our hands, our hearts, our words, and our minds to work your will in our lives each day. And we ask that these messages be received by those who are meant to hear them. Amen. Alrighty, I'm going to start with this Tarot of Wonderland since it's in my hand. And we're going to start reading for the Divine Mask and find out how they are doing. Shenanigans. <laughs> That's what I hear, shenanigans. Let's see. I got the five of wands. I always call the five of wands the analysis paralysis card, right? This is somebody who's been making their mental lists of pros and cons. Should I do this? Should I not do this? This is someone who's definitely all up in their head, worried about their next move, worried about something, definitely analyzing a situation. Now I've got the seven of wands on top of that. These are both highly combative energies. So on one hand, it feels like the divine masculine is going round and round in their head with something. And there's this seven of wands underneath this, which is for me is the image or the energy of drama, right? Drama. This is somebody who feels like they have to fight for their position. Um, this is someone who feels like they don't want to do this anymore. They don't want to keep fighting whatever this situation is. Um, I always think of the seven, I, I think of the five of wands as being like internal conflict and the seven of wands as being like quite external to you. So this divine masculine may just be dealing with a lot of people, butting heads with a lot of people. And I have the magician out. Very good. This is someone who, um, very good. Okay. This is someone who... Is, is trying to work things out on their own and they're doing everything they possibly can to get themselves out of some kind of stressful situation or trying to do everything that they can to come to some kind of reasonable solution to some situation that's clearly unpleasant here. But this magician energy, it's, it's kind of similar energy to the high priestess where we have someone who's kind of coming into some of their own spiritual gifts, their own intuitive abilities, their own, um, you know, master manifester kind of creation energy. I like that. Now, the, the magician for me as a reader is the card of Ophiuchus, but for many readers, it's also the card of Aries. So um, if that is of significance to you at all, otherwise, don't even bother caring, right? Um, and I've got the Queen of Pentacles. Ooh. And I have the Page of Pentacles. This Divine Masculine... Um, this could be someone who's having to start over again. And this could be someone who is having to um, take on a, a more nurturing role in their lives. This person could be uh, focusing very much on their family, on their home, on their financial um, life as well. If this person has children, they may be finding themselves in a position where they are now a father and a mother caretaker, kind of feminine, masculine energies, both. Um, with this page of pentacles on its side, this is someone who's having to start all over, kind of like from ground zero. And it feels like they've made a choice here. It feels like they've made a choice to choose themselves in some way, and it may have landed them in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> or it could not necessarily such a pickle, but just kind of cleaning up a mess and all of a sudden being forced into a dynamic that they weren't anticipating. Okay. 
I have the sun card out. That's such good news. Um, it comes out on its side, which isn't like my favorite, but things are getting better. This divine masculine, um, I think they've been through it recently. This sun card is the card of Leo, but it's, it's an energy of um, warmth, happiness. It's the happiest card in the entire deck, right? But it indicates coming out of a depression. It, it indicates like a renewal of energy in some way. Um, this divine masculine is kind of on the cusp of this right now, it feels like. It feels like they're starting to put the pieces of their lives back together. They may have recently been through something um, that was kind of a major fallout in their lives. I'm, I'm seeing like dust starting to settle and someone like sweeping things up with a broom. Um, Ten of Cups in the reverse. Um, this person may have recently been through a dissolution of a major partnership in their life. Um, could have been a marriage. The Ten of Cups it should be like the happy family card, right? Um, this, whenever we have it in the reverse, this is usually a dissolution of a marriage or a family dynamic as it was known previously. And I have the Seven of Pentacles. This person is waiting, they've been waiting for a shift. They've been waiting for something to be clarified, that they've been waiting, the, the Seven of Pentacles is all about waiting to see if all of the, the steps that you've taken are gonna start paying off in some way. This person, there's kind of like a, I'm, I'm hearing like tenuous, there's like a tenuous thread here. There's, someone feels like they're barely able to kind of keep their head above water. It's like a treading water kind of energy. I have the nine of wands in the reverse and it comes out way over here. I'm gonna leave this one way over here for a second and I'm gonna grab another deck to clarify. We're gonna use this vice versa tarot to get a little bit, um, a little bit nosier here. I've got the emperor of course here on the top of the deck with the empress right here as well. Well, let's see here. Now I have, but the two of wands, good. This is someone who all of a sudden is starting to feel ready for a new beginning. Um, I have the tower card here on the top of the deck. This person has been through something. They may now be newly single or they may have this divine feminine energy on their mind. Um, hmm. I've got the four of cups there, which is an energy of loneliness. I have the moon there, which is an energy of someone who is, uh, oh, wow. Okay. 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 Yes. And yes. Okay. We're just going to, we'll just, we're going to do that. And we're going to leave this alone. This deck is almost impossible to even use other than to just turn the cards. It just shows up the way it's supposed to. It's a great deck. This is the vice versa tarot. Um, pick it up if you like it. Um, Let's see here. Again, we've got the high priestess out here right next to this uh, magician energy. And this person is becoming highly intuitive in a way that they never expected their, themselves to be. This person has probably gone through a spiritual awakening. I had that, um, yep, there it is. That four of wands right there, which is our twin flame 1111 card, of course. Um, and this is someone who may be seeing a lot of synchronicities right now. They may be having some pretty intense dreams. I had that moon card out right there. Um, the moon is the card of cancer. Um, Pisces is this high priestess. And I've got the Wheel of Fortune here, which is indeed Sagittarius. And I've got Pisces out there again with that hanged man. Um, but beyond that, we have someone who has been through something kind of devastating um, to their financial situation. Or there's like an energy of devastation here. Um, someone who is not sure what they're going to do next, although they are giving it their best go here. Um, with this Tower card, this is someone who had to rebuild themselves um, pretty quickly. And it, it's almost like overnight or within the course of a couple of weeks like something fell apart in their lives and they had to to hurry up to to clean up some some kind of big situation or big mess this tower energy whatever it was it removed someone's mask in this situation probably this divine masculine's mask in some way and they're all of a sudden quite um exposed there's an energy of exposure here there's also an energy of again having to rebuild something once this catastrophe has happened right Right? And it's a good sign because this person's going to be rebuilding from ground zero, it looks like. And this person all of a sudden is making the choice to do this for themselves. All of a sudden, they are choosing 
um, to be authentic to themselves and to make they're, they're making choices that make sense for them um, all of a sudden they may be highly independent with this nine of Pentacles here this may be someone who is starting their own business this, they may be starting a project or they may um, see their divine feminine doing this with this two of cups energy and I did see that two of wands in there as well two of wands is all about creating um, Part availability for partnership and this is the two of wands for me is somebody who says you know I feel like I have enough to offer to another person and then this two of cups shows up um, so we've got a couple of twos out here already this person is feeling more more ready I'm more ready to extend themselves to someone and they're all of a sudden starting to see things in other people in a different way they're starting to um, feel feelings they haven't felt in a long time. Interesting. So back over here to this four of wands, again, that's that twin flame 1111 awakening card for sure. Um, it can be about creating a partnership. You see how there's two wands on each side. So each, each person that comes together here has got to be ready, right? This person, I feel like they're finally saying, you know, I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I've been alone long enough. I've looked at this situation for what it's been long enough, and now I'm ready to pick myself up and uh, move on to something different. With this high priestess energy coming in, in. There's a really heavy um, emphasis on psychic gifts, intuition, and um, telepathic conversations between this masculine and their feminine. Now, this hanged man energy, it goes right over here next to this nine of wands in the reverse, it, and over here next to this wheel of fortune too. This person has been waiting, waiting, and waiting. Seven of pentacles, hanged man, and it, not in the reverse, in the upright, the hanged man. This is somebody who recognizes if they don't reach out to this feminine energy pretty quickly, they will have lost an opportunity. This person's tired of waiting to do so. This person also has been waiting until they felt better, felt like more like themselves. And I really do feel like that's, that's going to get it's gonna they're gonna feel more fully in themselves um around Sagittarius season I say that because of this wheel of fortune card I keep getting this wheel of fortune out um whenever we're doing um divine counterpart readings and the wheel of fortune for me as a reader is card Sagittarius but this is also um it's time when it's time it's time and we have the magician on this side in the same way that we have this magician that came out earlier on um, and this is somebody who's taking matters into their own hands all of a sudden. It feels like that's going to be coming up within the next few weeks for a lot of you. This nine of wands in the reverse is somebody who feels like they're ready to start allowing others to come back towards them. They recognize the red flags that they didn't pick up on before in relationships. They feel a lot more confident in themselves to um, make better, healthier choices. Oh, good. I love this. I was a little bit nervous at first with all of this um, five of wands, seven of wands energy. It feels like this is kind of a challenging time for divine masculine energy where they could just be dealing with a lot of people and other people's feelings and having to, um, you know, just pick all these pieces up from some kind of destruction that's happened over here with the tower, but it feels like they're making it through it and they're actually growing a lot um, internally and this is somebody who's also learning how to balance their masculine and feminine selves within them and we all have masculine and feminine in, in, in all of us right and if you are if you're too heavy on the masculine side it's going to present in one way or too heavy on the feminine yin side it's going to present in a certain way this person is learning how to balance all of these energies within themselves and they're really starting to see how the making positive changes in their lives lifestyles, their routines, their daily habits are starting to create a sense of balance for themselves. This person, I really can't say enough good things about um, this divine masculine energy, whoever you are. A little bit of financial hiccup, but I trust it's going to work out. All right, let's get over here to this divine feminine side over here and find out how they are doing. You know what? I'm actually going to switch decks over here. I'm going to use this Chicoli deck actually to start for our Divine Feminines. we got the lovers on the bottom of the deck. Of course we do. And of course we got the Nine of Pentacles there with the Hanged Man, of course, and the Queen of Cups. I want to stop there. And I got the Wheel of Fortune on that side with the Death card. All right. A couple more out and then I'll go back through all that. <laughs>
And the Eight of Pentacles, good. Um, Divine Feminine is pretty hard at work right now. They're very much focused on their career. They also, um, there's a real single energy here because we've got the Nine of Pentacles out here twice. The Nine of Pentacles is the minor arcana of the Empress, right? Um, this is someone who is in business for themselves. They're highly independent and specific they are lacking in codependency. This is a good sign. This is someone who has worked hard to achieve a lot of their independence and they are working um, on more and more. They're working on it more and more every day. Their business is whatever it is that they're doing, your Divine Feminine's career, um, whatever projects they're working on, they're working hard on them and they're doing very well. Good job. Um, we have this Hanged Man energy, which is somebody who has also been waiting Hanged man, hanged man. We got a lot of mirroring that's going to be happening between these divine counterparts. For sure, there always is. Um, and this is someone who's waiting on the right person. This, um, Whoever this divine feminine is, they're not engaging in... Um, any kind of relationship right now, it feels like they're waiting on the right person to present themselves. This is somebody who feels like they really can't give their heart to just anyone. This person says, I'll know it when I see it. Again, I have the Wheel of Fortune, which is the card of Sagittarius. Yes, yes. Um, and I have the um, Death card, which is the card of Scorpio, which is the season that we're in right now. There are a lot of major changes that are happening for this feminine energy, and it feels like it's relating largely to their career, to their finances, um, and any kind of projects that they're working on. Good news, good stuff. Now I have the Ace of Pentacles out in the reverse. I have the Queen of Swords on its side. So I got two Queens out here, but this um, Ace of Pentacles on its side. Okay, hold on, Divine Feminines. There it is. All right, this Divine Feminine has kind of got a little bit, yeah, I got the strength in the reverse. This Divine Feminine is struggling with some kind of issue in their lives. I want to find out immediately what it is um, because I have the Strength card in the reverse, which is also the card of Leo, which is interesting because we've got Leo over here as well that's kind of like... The de this energy of like depression or coming out of a depression for the divine masculine feels very similar to whatever this feminine is going through over here. However, it's different because it feels like this divine masculine is picking up the pieces from something. I'm hearing that they did contribute to. It's not like it came out of nowhere. But this feminine, it feels like they've been independent for some time and there's something with this Ace of Pentacles that is that has been a struggle for them. The Ace of Pentacles is my favorite card to get in any reading, no matter what kind of reading it is, because it's usually, when it's in the upright position, it's a very authentic choice that someone can feel very confident in investing in because it, it's just... It's authentic to you, it's honest, it's truthful, it's gonna definitely turn a profit, whatever it is. It's definitely something you can take to the bank, right? That's the Ace of Pentacles. But when it comes out on its side like this, this feminine is really starting to question the authenticity of maybe, could be their connection to this Divine Masculine, or it could be um, some of the choices that they've been making With this Queen of Swords energy, because I've got the Queen of Cups here on its side and I've got the Queen of Swords here on its side, this is the problem. This Divine Feminine hasn't really been communicating with very many people. Uh, wow. And I have the Two of Swords here. What were we saying? A tenuous balance? Like someone on, like pulling on a thread, I think is what I said, trying to tread water, keep their head above water. This feminine energy, it feels like they are doing the same, where it feels like at any moment, like the other shoe could drop or the bottom could fall out of something. This strength in reverse is someone who may be fighting or battling um, health issues, addictions, or um, struggles in their day-to-day -day life. And it's become, it's come, it's coming to the point where they are, um, oh, I get it. This, this feminine may have... Um, isolated themselves. They haven't talked to a lot of people about a lot of the things that they've experienced or gone through. And it feels like every day is quite exhausting. And it's, um, they may just have an awful lot of responsibility on their shoulders. They aren't um, reaching out for help from anyone right now. They don't feel comfortable allowing people in for whatever reason. They, there's an energy of mistrust here for this feminine and anyone <laughs> that uh, is not 
very close to them. I don't think this feminine uh, collective, whoever this represents, is very close to very many people. Okay, well, let's grab this um, vice versa tarot here. Yeah, we're gonna talk about this lover's energy in a minute. Um, so the lover's is the card of Gemini, and this is uh, this can indicate a few different things. It typically, like word for word, kind of indicates having a major choice to make in love. Now, it can be having more than one option. And I feel like this feminine, whoever they are, they have had a lot of options in the recent past and they haven't seen anything that works well for them. And this is probably why, and I don't think it's just about their love life. I think it's love, friendships, whatever. Um, and I think this is why they keep themselves to themselves a lot. This person may have a small group of friends that they spend the bulk of their time with and other than that, they just don't let too many people in which creates uh, an environment of, um, oh, just a heavy weight. It, it just, it feels heavy on this person because they don't have a lot of support because they don't let people come close to them. Very interesting that this masculine has this nine of wands over here, which is that wounded warrior energy, kind of a similar vibe where we don't allow people to come in even when it would be helpful. That two of swords indicates that somebody is um, kind of at a crossroads in their life. What do we do next? Um, this lover's card is coming up quickly for this feminine energy. And now we have this four of swords between this masculine and feminine, which is this energy of separation. Each one of these in their own lives, um, either together or separately, have kind of destroyed during this time of separation, they've kind of burned the house down, basically. They've kind of destroyed everything that they once knew. Woo! It's like burning in the background. Same thing with this tower energy, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of fatigue here. I'm sensing less regret and more fatigue. And yet, here's the thing. Those fires are not anywhere near to being put out yet. That's like full blaze. And I have the Justice card out, perfect. That's the card of Libra. Um, we've just finished with that season. Um, this could have been, <sighs> Libra season may have been particularly challenging for a lot of these divine feminines here, but we had a lot of um, justice coming in. There could have been divorce um, coming in for this divine feminine energy, maybe for this divine masculine energy as well. Um, this justice card can be the card of legal matters. It can be um, paperwork being filed. It can indicate divorce. It's also the card of Libra, right? Um, but it can also indicate things being fair and balanced when it's in the upright position, which it is, which is good. This could be um, a balancing of this feminine's energy if, possibly, or it could just be an energy that comes back in to help rebalance this poor feminine's life, whoever they are. Let's see. Six of, goodness, hold on. There's that lover's card again. Fine. Jeez Louise. All right, I'm gonna stop it there. And maybe there, all right. Okay, so I have the Six of, so of Wands in the reverse here for the feminines. This is someone who feels like they have made a lot of mistakes in their lives, and this is one of the reasons why they don't let people in. This feminine energy is afraid, to, oh man, um, everybody makes mistakes, people. Nobody's perfect, and we all have these lives where we can screw up royally, and the people that love us forgive us when they can, and we choose to forgive people when we can. It's just the way the world works. So if you are an imperfect person, congratulations, you're not alone. This feminine energy um, is afraid to admit some of the mistakes that they've made in the past. They, that's why they don't allow people to get too close to them any longer because they're afraid of having to be honest about some of the things that they've either done or said. And it's a real energy of being afraid that people are not going to forgive them. Maybe this masculine won't forgive them if they knew the truth or something like that. My goodness. Um, 
I seriously doubt that's the case. Let's be real. We've got this lover's card here again now. It should be noted that when the lover's card comes out, it indicates having a choice to make in love. Now, when we have a choice, what does that mean? That means there's more than one option, right? So this could be um, pertaining to a third party situation. <sighs> Not necessarily though. Um, with this five of wands here, this feminine energy has been just as much up in their head about if, if you know who this masculine is, and I'm assuming that you do, I'm assuming that this is, um, divine masculine, divine feminine who are in separation in some way where they have not had any kind of contact for some time because we have that separation card right there in the middle with that four of swords. Um, if, if that is the case, this feminine is feeling the same feelings of, um, can be almost like, uh, frustration, emotional obsession kind of thing, um, that analysis paralysis card. And this feminine isn't reaching out to this masculine. This masculine isn't reaching out to this feminine or so far it has not happened. This feminine has had nose to the grindstone, working on work, working on their career, um, developing whatever it is that they're developing, businesses, projects, whatever. Um, and they're doing very, very well. Good job you. Now here's the problem. This feminine recognizes <laughs> because we have this two of swords out here with this seven of swords right in the middle. This is the Achilles heel here. This feminine recognizes that, sh that they have not told the truth entirely in this situation, whether it's about their feelings for this masculine or that's probably it, um, or, or something else in their lives. And there's an energy of feeling like they need to hide something here. Now, I have the world card out here, which is also the card of Libra. And it goes right on top of the Justice card, which is also the card of Libra. And I'm wondering if there was some kind of something that came about during Libra season. There's an energy of exposure. Exposure with the tower and exposure with this, this feeling here. Um, this Two of Swords, now we have this feminine energy at a crossroads. Do I go this way? Do I go that way? Do I continue to commit to whatever this is? Do I go in a different direction? Am I ever going to be honest about my feelings here? Now we have this Ace of Swords that comes in, which can be a message of honesty, a message of truth, a message of clarity. This can be the feminine sending a message or this can be them receiving a message. I will dig deeper in a moment. Now what's interesting also is we have this Queen of Pentacles that comes out for the feminine as well. We've got the Queen of Pentacles here for the masculine and we've got it here for the feminines. They are focusing on their home, their business, their finances, their career. Seems like both of these individuals, whoever you are, are focusing on the same things. And there's a real energy of needing to all of a sudden be authentic to oneself with this Page of Pentacles and this Ace of Pentacles here. And with this Seven of Swords, this feminine has not told the truth about how they feel about this masculine. This masculine knows, yes they do. All of a sudden this masculine is just every bit as intuitive as this feminine. Now, I always say I'm a Reiki practitioner and I always feel like most of our masculines, their lower three chakras are really humming and kicking and always in great shape, but those upper three chakras are always a little bit sluggish. They need a little bit of extra clean out typically. And it's just the way that we've evolved as a, a species like, and, and they always say, you know, women, we're the communicators. We're the ones that um, like have all of these intuitive abilities and things. Now, usually feminine's energies, the upper three chakras will be like really awake and really supercharged. And then those lower three chakras, the ones that are our root chakras that are responsible for financial abundance and stability and, and growth and um, that supportive um, foundational um, chakra, it's, it's usually a little slower. It needs a little bit of extra healing. Usually that sacral chakra needs a little bit of extra healing. Usually that solar plexus chakra, where we're projecting ourselves out towards others, needs a little bit of clean out. And it feels like we are having a shift in dynamic here where we have the feminines really hitting their financial pathway pretty hard. And these masculines really picking up the slack with all of these extra intuitive abilities, all of these extra um, telepathic abilities all of a sudden this person seeing all of these synchronicities while this feminine over here is like chugging along with the day-to-day -day and like paying the bills and like starting all of these new projects fantastic I love it all right now both of these individuals with this hanged man out have both been waiting on the other person congratulations you win okay let me get another deck out and I just kind of want to get a through line as to what's gonna be happening 
because I have this page of cups. Ay, ay, ay. I feel like this feminine. I feel like this feminine may be the one who ends up issuing some kind of apology or some kind of, hey, how are you doing? Somebody who kind of crosses the aisle first. Okay. And it's coming up with this seven of swords, which is that energy of someone who just hasn't been honest. They haven't been honest entirely. I have the Queen of Wands on this side and I've got the Eight of Swords on this side. Queen of Wands is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, feminine energy. And I got the Queen of Pentacles over here again. Yep, and we got the Fool card, very good. We're about to have some kind of new beginning between these two. I got the Three of Wands here, which is the Minor Arcana of the Magician. This is an energy of manifesting a new beginning between these two. With this Eight of Swords, there's been blocked communication. Could be digitally blocked, could just be ignoring one another, could be avoiding one another, avoiding a conversation, or simply procrastinating having a conversation. Over here, I've got the Ace of Pentacles that comes out on its side again. These two individuals are looking at each other from a distance. We've got the devil up there indicating obsession. <sighs> that ace of pentacles is the potential for a brand new beginning, but neither one of these, specifically this feminine is not trusting it. This feminine energy doesn't trust too many folks these days. I've got the nine of cups. Good job. Um, nine of cups is about wish fulfillment. These two... I have this feeling, and I got the hanged man out there again. Um, I have this feeling, yep, there it is. Temperance, card of Sagittarius. I'll say it again. I have this feeling that these two individuals are gonna cross paths at some kind of a gathering. It could be um, out at a local restaurant, local bar, local pub, someplace where these two individuals know other people. There's a group of people, um, I don't know if these two know each other socially or spend time in each other's environment socially. Um, it's like a busy environment, dark, it feels like nighttime energy and it does feel like Sagittarius season when all of this starts to shift. There will be a brand new beginning with this Fool card here. We're wrapping up loose ends here with this World card for sure. And we've been seeing a lot of that in the daily readings or their frequent readings, however long. Obviously I'm not doing them every day, I've been really busy. Um, but this Fool energy, is it's like a fresh brand new start and it comes from this devil energy which is just this constant obsessive manifestation on both sides of this it goes right in the middle it's kind of like we aren't going to be happy until this happens neither person can be at rest until this happens i just saw 32 32 on the clock there I've got the Empress out. That's the card of Divine Feminine. It's also the card of Virgo. And I got the King of Pentacles. Okay. Um, King of Pentacles is Virgo Taurus Capricorn energy. It feels like this person, oh wow. These two individuals cannot help but notice one another anytime they are in each other's environment, energetically notice one another. There it is. Um, it feels like whenever this um, new beginning happens, this Empress may have just recently gone through something. I don't know, something that's kind of got them a little out of sorts. They may be going out and spending time with friends, small group of friends here, um, at, on this day or this time. And that's when this um, Emperor King of Pentacles energy shows up here. I got the world, the card of Libra again, and this is when we end something. This is when we finally close up these loose ends. We get down to the bottom of something here. There is I believe that there will be a conversation. Let me look just a little bit. Yep, there it is, Page of Swords. Yes, there's probably gonna be a conversation between these two individuals that happens on this night. Um, these two individuals are out with friends, like separate groups, they bump into each other and there's some kind of conversation that brings closure here. Closure, 
And then I have, what is that? The Eight of Pentacles. And then it feels like it's back to business as usual. And it feels like that's what leads us in here to this Fool card because this Eight of Pentacles is what this feminine has been doing this whole time. Just work, 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 work. Maybe this has to do with a work party. Five of Wands in the reverse again. Whatever it is, it puts an end to all of the um, mental drama. It goes right underneath that Devil card and the Five of Wands because we have the Five of Wands here. We have the Five of Wands here. Remember, that's that Analysis Paralysis card. When we have it come out in the reverse here between these two, it feels like now all of a sudden we can put it to rest and everything gets better. Everything feels calm. Okay. interesting. I have the Ten of Wands and I've got the Six of Pentacles here in the reverse. Um, this Ten of Wands can be overwhelming to the point that nobody knows what to do with it. The Ten of Wands can be a burden that they don't want to carry any longer, that they can't carry any longer. Whatever happens within this conversation, it allows someone to be at peace. It allows someone to no longer be obsessively worrying about something. But with this Six of Pentacles in the reverse, this can be the energy of unrequited love. It can be the energy of um, non-reciprocated love in some way, non-reciprocated feelings. I've got the hermit in the reverse. Um, this... Because I'm hearing like a different storyline here. Yeah, I got the sun out on its side with the six of swords right there. We're gonna put that there. Um, and the five of cups here. This so it feels actually what's happened here. One of the people in this partnership, whether it's the feminine or the masculine, I don't know which one. Um may not have felt the same way about this counterpart. Like they all of a sudden, there's an energy of regret for maybe misjudging a person. Maybe there's regret for not giving someone an opportunity to explain themselves or something like that. There is an energy of physical relocation with this six of swords over here. And it feels like one of these individuals has moved house, moved locations in some way. And that actually may be a topic of conversation that comes up between these two. This, it doesn't feel like this has happened yet. With this hermit in the reverse, this is someone who regrets a lot of the choices that they made before they were so in tune with their higher selves or with a higher power. The hermit energy is someone who spends a lot of time in self-isolation, in meditation, in prayer. And when we have this in the reverse, this is someone who acknowledges that they haven't always done that, they haven't always been that way, and that when they were not in their highest self, they made a lot of mistakes. Sure, we all do. Um, with this sun that comes out on its side, there's a real desire for healing here. There's a real desire to make this situation get better or at least to have some closure. That world card is indicative of closure. Um, and it, it really allows you to just completely close off that volume of your life, that cycle of your life, and get ready for the brand new beginning that is this Fool card energy, where we have a lot of transformation. There's a lot of butterflies on this um, particular card. This is the artist's inner vision tarot. Um, it kind of reads like a circle here, where I'm not sure that these two individuals are gonna come back together real quick. I don't, I don't see that. I don't, I see a shift happening in that time of Sagittarius season. 
but I don't know that this is going to be what brings them back together. Yes, I have this sun energy here. It's almost, it's, it's very tenuous. All right, just real quick, let me have this um, traditional Rider Waite deck. I've got the star card there. That's the card of Aquarius. Got the Queen of Swords over here too. Twice out for that Queen of Swords energy. This is someone who has an opportunity to come clean about a situation or to be honest about a situation. If it's this feminine, I seriously doubt they're going to be, but I could be wrong. Let's see. No shade, no judgment. I just can't see that happening. Let's see. Um, Six of Pentacles. Now we have the change. This is what's happened. So once this conversation happens, once this... Um, interaction happens we have the six of pentacles in the reverse that turns into the six of pentacles upright um, which is all about equal balance equal give and take requited feelings reciprocal love and it's very balanced on both sides something shifts here where all of a sudden we have these two people on the same page and this like um, experiencing the same level of magnetic attraction to one another that may have been overlooked or misjudged somehow in the past. And that's kind of the separate storyline I was hearing, this Four of Pentacles here, is this energy of not wanting to let go of your own power and control though. That's what I mean. I think that there's a shift in the way these two individuals see each other or think about one another, but I don't think that this is the time where they come back together specifically. I think there's still a lot of honesty and opening up that has to be done here before these two can really come back together. And I've still got this five of pentacles over here right next to this five of pentacles. Um, and that's, that's important. These people, um, this five of pentacles is a glass is half empty kind of vibe. You know, this is, um, someone who's still working their way through either financial poverty, um, energetic poverty, something like that. Somebody who is just really struggling to kind of keep their head above water in some way. And I feel like they're going to be maybe focused on this. That star card came out, which is Aquarius season, which is, um, what is that? Like end of January, beginning of February time. Right. And so we may have another shift that happens, um, towards the time of Aquarius. I've got the Queen of Wands there. Good. Um, Queen of Wands is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, feminine energy. This Queen of Wands, all of a sudden, they're very, the Queen of Wands is very attractive, like very physically attractive, very sexually attractive. The most like physically attractive of all the Queens, supposedly also very um, intuitive. This one is very creative and like energetically, like a master manifester, very similar energy to this uh, magician. And this Queen of Wands, all of a sudden really comes into their own. Everybody sees it. And I got the Ace of Wands, of course we do. Um, this, this masculine energy, and it doesn't have to be male, you don't have to, it's not about male or female, it's just about the energy that you carry, right? Um, less about gender, more about energy. But this, all of a sudden, this meeting, this conversation, changes the dynamic where this masculine energy finally sees this empress energy for what they truly are here which is this empress energy maybe they were missing it before or maybe there's a real heavy energy of misjudgment over here 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 knight of pentacles Ay, yeah, yeah, that's not good enough. I have to be honest. The Knight of Pentacles is somebody who wants to slowly start coming back towards this Queen of Wands. But the truth of the matter is this Knight action, not going to cut it. This Ace of Wands is the most sexually passionate card we have in the whole deck, right? Other than like the Devil, which we already have out here, or the King of Wands, or the Queen of Wands. Um, but it's kind of not good enough. Like you can't have a queen with a knight. You can't have an empress with anyone other than the emperor, you know, not successfully really, but this knight of pentacles, they want to start slowly making their way back towards this queen of wands. I'm hearing, shh, keep it quiet. And I've got the empress out there again. 
I think the Empress has come out of every deck that I've used, right? So, but I have this Empress in the reverse, and I think that this Empress is not going to be happy with this um, slow-moving behavior. Knight of Pentacles, the minor arcana of the Empress. Very nicely done, whoever you are. Um, your energy is super clear. That's the truth. Um, and you are probably very aware of how energetically capable you are, for sure. If you can make your cards come out this many times from your living room over here to mine, you're pretty special. Um, but this... This is somebody who recognizes who they are. This Empress energy recognizes who they are themselves. They do not accept anything less than what they should have. And it feels like they've tried on a lot of shoes that didn't fit recently, so to speak, um, within other people. And there's just, they're just not messing around any longer. They don't have any, they're, they're not open. They're really not open to receiving anything other than the right thing. They may um, like play around with others I'm hearing or toy, toy, that's not nice. I think that's not what you mean. The, um, they may entertain others briefly, but not for very long. There's no sense of commitment with anyone here. This Knight of Pentacles can be someone who wants to offer a gift or something like that. The Queen of Wands, Empress energy simply can't be bought. They have everything already. They don't need anything. They're only looking for honesty and someone's true heart. This um, moon card comes out and we have the energy of secrets being unleashed and things being exposed to the light. This four of swords is still the energy of separation. Like I said, I don't think that whatever happens here in Sagittarius season like seals the deal for them, but it creates a shift in the dynamic. I know that's not what you want to hear. I know, I know. But these things take a lot of time. Both of these individuals um, and this entire collective has a lot of work to do just getting themselves to be where they want to be. We're talking about clearing um, lineages, clearing um, damage to our chakra systems, clearing out inner child wounding damage, you know, healing aspects of our lives um, for not just ourselves, but for generations to come. That's the whole purpose of divine counterpart in the first place is to encourage positive growth for ourselves and for the world, right? For all of us, for the soul's evolution. Um, yeah, big deal. So there's like, there's no reason to hurry this. You can't hurry love, right? Um, and this Empress energy won't accept anything less than what's right for them. This uh, masculine energy, this, this masculine energy over here, they're still picking up some pieces in their lives. There could actually be a physical relocation they're dealing with right now. Uh, there's still a heavy energy of separation here, but there's an energy of regretfulness about this separation energy. But it feels like things are starting to change. At the very least, we have a lot of exposure and we have things coming to light. Coming to light with this moon card out here twice. That's the energy of Cancer. Um... King of Pentacles, good. All right, fair enough. King of Pentacles has come out multiple times. I'm not gonna dig through it here to find it, but I know the Queen of Pentacles has come out several times too. Uh, this masculine energy is picking up pieces. They're working on rebuilding a home of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, and this feminine energy, still focusing on their career, but they are still really struggling to admit the feelings that they have, the things that they haven't been entirely honest about with this, um, towards this masculine energy. And that's just kind of how it sits. But we have an energy of um, exposure that happens here during this temperance season where we have a real shifting here of how these two individuals see one another. Someone in this dynamic, I don't know if it's the feminine or the masculine, all of a sudden recognizes um, a misjudgment or something and there's um, like a remagnetization between these two that happens. There's like a wake up that happens where all of a sudden things kind of start to flow in the right direction. We're not all the way there yet, but we're definitely headed in the right direction. All right, clear as mud, clear as mud. All right, that was your reading for this new moon for Divine Counterparts. I wish you the very best. I wish you well, and I will catch up with you guys around about the full moon. All right, see you soon.